today uh, we'll discuss about mpox or monkeypox we'll basically discuss about these subheadings so let's begin with epidemiology this monkeypox virus was discovered in denmark in 1958 in monkeys kept for the research and first reported human case of monkeypox was a nine month old boy from congo in 1970 and following the eradication of smallpox in 1980 and the end of smallpox vaccination worldwide mpox steadily emerged in the central east and the west africa after 97 uh, this uh, mpox has occurred sporadically in the various parts of the Africa. In 2003, there was an outbreak in the United States, uh, which was linked to the imported wild animals. Similarly, uh, since 2005, uh, thousands of cases uh, are reported in the Congo every year. And in 2017, this mpox again re-emerged in Nigeria and continued to spread between the people across the country and in the travelers to the other destinations. Mm -hmm. And in 2022, an outbreak of mpox uh, spread across the globe uh, about 110 countries reported about 87,000 cases and 112 deaths mpox primarily affected gay bisexual or other men who have sex with men uh, because the major mode of transmission was through the sexual networks recently on august 14 2024 uh, due to the recent outbreak, WHO has uh, declared a public health emergency of international concern. Uh, now, talking about the causative agent, monkeypox virus is an enveloped double-stranded virus in the pox viridae family or the pox virus genus. And this uh, family includes uh, variola, cowpox, vaccinia, and other viruses. This virus has two genetic clades, clade 1 and clade 2. Clade 1 causes more severe infection. Regarding the transmission, Person-to-person -person transmission is a common mode of transmission and the direct contact with the infectious skin or other lesions are responsible for the transmission. And this type of contact might include face-to-face -face contact, skin-to-skin -skin contact, mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact, mouth-to-skin contact, or respiratory droplets or short-range aerosols from prolonged close contact. Similarly, it can transmit to human from the animals as well, like from the bites or scratches or during the activities such as hunting, skinning, trapping, cooking, playing with carcasses or eating animals. Similarly, uh, mpox can be transmitted from the contaminated objects like clothing, linens, sharp injuries in the healthcare setup, and in the tattoo parlors. Similarly, pregnant ladies can uh, transfer virus to the unborn babies as well. The incubation period for this virus is about 1 to 21 days, and most people usually develop uh, symptoms within a week of exposure. And the symptoms they usually last for two to four weeks, and it, they last longer in the immunocompromised patients. Infectious period uh, usually begins from the onset of a symptom until after all the scabs on the skin have fallen off and a fresh layer of intact skin has formed underneath. The most common signs and symptoms include rash, fever, sore throat, lymphadenopathy, headache, backache, muscle pain. So among these, fever, the rash, and lymphadenopathy are quite characteristic features. Rash usually begins on the face. However, it can occur anywhere in the body, including palms of hand and soles, face, mouth, throat, groin, and genital areas, anus. Rash can be itchy or painful, and usually the rash evolves over two to four weeks in the various stages, like from macules to papules, from papules to vesicles, and then postules. And then there will be the crusting, and later on the scar forms, and then it falls off. And this uh, mpox rash can lead to atrophic and hypertrophic scarring as well. So this picture shows the progression of a uh, monkeypox rash from macules to papule to vesicles to postule and then umbilication crusting and then healing this picture shows the rash in monkeypox here you can see the papule here is a postule there's the umbilication similarly here is the crust formation and there's the healing of this the skin lesion similarly here it shows the monkeypox lesion in the face hands and in the other parts of the body this picture basically shows the involvement of the mucosal surfaces like in the genital areas, in the tongue, in the anus, in the lips, in the penis, and in the oral cavity. So now moving on to the history and physical examination. Thorough history is very important to assess the possible mpox exposure and epidemiological risk factors. Similarly, detailed sexual history is very important because that is the most common mode of transmission. And complete physical examination, including skin and mucosal surface, is also very important. And travel history and vaccination history should never be missed in those who are suspected of having mpox. Mpox can cause various complications like abscess due to secondary infection of the skin lesions, serious skin damage, and sometimes even the corneal infection leading to the loss of vision. Sometimes it can cause pneumonia, it can cause encephalitis, myocarditis, proctitis, balanitis, urethritis. Because of the difficulty in swallowing, vomiting, and the diarrhea, there can be dehydration, malnutrition. Patient can even develop sepsis and can die. So the differential diagnosis is very broad. Like all the skin diseases that present with the rash 
uh, can be the differential like chickenpox, measles, retro skin infections, scabies, herpes simplex virus, herpes zoster, malusculum contagiosum, syphilis, lymphogranulum venerum, and even medication associated allergies and allergic skin rashes. So for the diagnosis, the diagnosis is usually done by detecting viral DNA in a sample using PCR method. And the best diagnostic specimens are directly taken from the rash or from the fluid or from the crust and it's collected by the vigorous swabbing. In the absence of the skin lesion, we can take oropharyngeal swab or rectal swab. However, testing of the blood is not recommended and antibody detection methods are also not, det not recommended because they cannot distinguish between different orthopox viruses. Treatment is basically early and supportive care, pain management, care of the rash, prevention of complication and isolation of the patient. So for the pain management, we can use the over-the-counter medications like uh, staminophen and SIDs, or sometimes we can use topical steroids and anesthetics like lidocaine. If the pain is very severe, we can use gabapentin or opioids. For the proctitis, we can use stool softeners, warm sits bath. And for the oropharyngeal lesions, we can use oral antiseptics like chlorhexidine mouthwash, local anesthetics like viscous lidocaine and analgesic mouthwash. And next important part of the treatment is care of the rash. Patients should wash the skin with mild soap and water, and they should not share their towels, bath linens, or clothing with others. And they should uh, try to cover the rash as much as possible. And antiseptics and antibacterial agents should be only used if there's a concern for bacterial infection. And if the, if the lesion gets infected, patients should immediately contact the physician or healthcare provider. And if there's concern for scarring, patient can use silicon-based gel or sitting. And sun protection, at least to a FSP of 30 or higher, is necessary for several months after the lesion resolution to avoid hyper or hyperpigmentation of the lesions or scars. And patients should avoid scratching or underfilling the lesions or scab because this can lead to the secondary infection. And to help soothe the skin, beds may be taken. Similarly, if, this, if the skin is a pruritic or if there's aging, patient can use oral antihistaminic as well as the topical agents like calamine lotion, petroleum jelly, or colloid oatmeal. The next important part of the treatment is managing the uh, life threatening and the severe manifestations of mpox. And for this purpose, we can use the FDA regulated drugs and biologic, biologic agents. And usually, the complications mostly occur in the form of ocular infection, neurologic complications, myopericarditis, or complications associated with the mucosal lesion, or sometimes uncontrolled viral spread. Uh, due to the underlying immunocompromised status like HIV. So in these situations, we can use a uh, specific treatment to treat the MPOX. So one of the agents which we can use is Tecoferimat, which is also known as Tipox ST246. It's a novel antiviral drug, which is stockpiled for the smallpox preparedness. And this is FDA approved for the treatment of smallpox in adults and children. However, it's used in MPOX investigational, and there are ongoing trials like a STOMP trial and PAM007 trial, uh, which are trying to identify the efficacy of this antiviral agent in MPOX. And it's available in oral or IV form. Similarly, there are some other antiviral agents like Brincidofir and Cidofopir, a trifluoride ophthalmic solution, which can be used in the complicated cases. And similarly, sometimes vaccinia immunoglobulin uh, can also be used. And uh, there are two types of uh, MPOX vaccines, which can be used for the prevention of the MPOX. The first vaccine and the commonly used vaccine is uh, Genios. It's a non-replicating live vaccine derived from the modified vaccinia and cara MVA virus. It's approved for the MPOX and the smallpox, and this can be used administered subcut or intradermal in two doses 28 days apart and it's usually suitable for the immunocompromised individuals as it's a non-replicating live vaccine. The next vaccine is ACAM2000. It's a live replicating vaccine virus vaccine. It's approved for the smallpox prevention, but uh, it has been used off-label for the MPOX in certain situations. It's administered as a single dose using a bifurcated needle, and it's not recommended for patients with weak immune system or certain skin conditions due to the risk of the severe side effects. So these uh, MPOX vaccines are indicated for the people at risk of MPOX and so patient, those patients should be vaccinated prior to the exposure. And those people with high risk uh, include health workers at the risk of exposure, men who have sex with men, people with multiple sex partners and the sex workers. MPOX vaccine can also be used as a post-exposure prophylaxis vaccine. And for this purpose, uh, it should be given within four days of contact with someone who has MPOX or within up to 14 days if there are no symptoms. So the next uh, important way to prevent and control the disease is to remain isolated at home or at another location for the duration of the illness. And patients should ideally stay at home until all the scabs fall off and 
and a new layer of the skin forms and patient will always try to cover the lesions and wear a well fitting mask when around other people and patients should avoid physical contact as much as possible and they should receive the recommended uh, vaccine especially during the outbreaks so these are the references which we have used in our presentation i hope this video is helpful if this video is helpful please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and families thank you